If I was asked to name a few micro brands that are both successful and unique, but most importantly, always go their own way, there are a few that spring to mind, but at the top of the list is the brand Zelos out of Singapore. If you think watches are boring, then go check out the Zelos site. The different movements they use and the color and material combinations are so out there sometimes that I can't help thinking to myself, surely that's too much. And I keep thinking that all throughout the four minutes they take to sell out. When I say color combinations, that's not just the dial and hands. The brand is well known to take Loom to literally the next level. Every launch seems to have a few models that gets loads of attention and sell out very quickly. And then there are usually a few more variants that take a little longer, but eventually sell out too. Post launch, there are angry people on Facebook groups that laments missing out, and there are others that snag one to potentially resell at a higher price later. In the recent Swordfish launch, I had some help to secure one of the two models that were the most sought after a blue full loom doll and an orange full loom doll. I fell in love with the orange one immediately, and I can honestly say that it's one of the few that I loved immediately from Zelos. It's summer here in the Southern Hemisphere, and it's a great summer watch in my opinion. I'm going to tell you all about this model today, and if you're interested in your own swordfish, you may have missed out on this particular model at the stunning launch price of US $299, but there are a few other combinations available, and at a roughly $429, US they are still fantastic value. So let's jump in and check out the Zelos Swordfish. If you're into automatic wristwatches and like what you see today, I would be so grateful if you liked and subscribed. Feel free to look back at my almost 70 videos too. I enjoy taking watches outside in natural light, and I get up close and personal with them later on in my studio. The Swordfish Diver is the value king in the product range, and it's also perfectly sized at 40mm in diameter, 12.3mm thick, 45.3 mm lug to lug, and a lug width of 20 mm. In short, it'll fit most people, and with a stunningly good bracelet that has quick release spring bars, it's easy to swap over to your many other 20 mm straps. I will cover the bracelet later, and you'll notice I use a black tropic strap in my outside shots, so you can see the difference it makes to the look. This dial is obviously a big feature with this in-your-face colour. I saw people in the Facebook group be quite shocked about the shade and wanting to swap. I couldn't like it more. As I'll definitely cover later, the loom is so strong that even coming back inside in full daylight gives it an appearance of having a light lit underneath the dial. I've always preferred markers over numbers on a dial like this, and what we have here is almost a reverse sandwich dial. What I mean by that is that usually the layer under the dial is loomed, and this shines through the carved out slots, but here the bottom layer is a matte black, and the top layer is drenched in loom. A small and not immediately noticeable touch is that the 12, 3 and 9 have white loom borders around them. Even the tiny square underneath the black and white color match 6 date complication has white borders. The logo in white is another favourite to me here. It's discreet and doesn't draw any attention to itself, and it's the only bit of print we see here other than the model name and water resistance of 200 meters at just about the 6. Sometimes I feel the Zelos hands are a little too much for me personally, but here the Minute Hands cathedral-like design looks fantastic in black and white, and the simple hour hand is a perfect design. There is one thing that doesn't quite work for me, and that's ironically the loom, but more on that later. Covering the dial is a flat sapphire crystal, and as far as I can tell, there's also sapphire glass on the fully loom vessel. Another cool touch is the almost bolt-like design that holds the crystal in place. I think it serves a purpose other than adding visual interest, and it might be a quick way to replace it or hold it in place, I'm guessing. The bezel feels pretty good. 
It's not as smooth as it feels, and it also doesn't quite line up. But since the triangle is also white and black, it's not that noticeable, so it doesn't bother me particularly. There is no backplay whatsoever, so that's good. The swordfish case design is highly reminiscent of the Seiko Samurai, which is a great thing in my book. These sloped lugs look great with a bracelet and any strap. This design also means that smaller wrists can wear it without the lugs protruding over the sides of the wrist. The smooth transition to the angular crown guards is another great touch. They protect the signed and awesome feeling crown that is both grippy and smooth. Flipping the wash over, we see the deep edged swordfish and some specks. This is a numbered edition out of 200 and I somehow got the 007 out of 200, which made me smile. I could see Daniel Craig's Mr. Bond wearing this in a summer bar in the Bahamas, but instead it'll be me enjoying a cocktail on my deck. And that's almost as good, uh, but not according to my wife. Within beats the ever-reliable Seiko NH35 with a custom date whip. This is a great thing since servicing or even replacing should cost me very little, which is starting to matter to me more with the growing collection. This bracelet is simply brilliant, and particularly at the extremely attractive asking price of a swordfish. Flat individual links that drape around the wrist are super comfortable and the screwing links are easy to adjust yourself. It's mostly brushed, but with slight polished bevels, but they are not so polished that they will become an eyesore if scratched. In even better news, there is no pointless diver's extension here, but rather a custom push adjust extension that adds around 10 millimeters or so, which sure could be used for fitting over a wetsuit, but even more so adjusting slightly on a hot day. As mentioned, you also get quick release spring bars and female end links for optimal fit on all wrists. It's impressive to say the least to get this sort of hardware, and I suppose that comes down to being a mature brand now that was finally able to invest in such a solution. Even the buckle is well thought through with a stripe of brush surface on the top, so the inevitable scratches from desk wear may be slightly more hidden than on a full polished version. So the loom finally. It is astonishingly good with its combo of blue and yellow. My one small issue is that when it fades, the blue hands fade quite a bit too, so there's a bit of a lack of contrast that can make it a little hard to see the time if you wake up at 4am. But who am I kidding with this moaning? This is so much fun and I love it. The sunny and fun Zelo Swordfish in Ember Orange is a lovely and fun wear. I'm about to take it on a tropical holiday, which will include a bit of diving and cocktails in a bar, and I genuinely think that it's the perfect fit for this watch. Does that mean you can't wear it in winter? No, because in colder holidays, it'll remind me and hopefully you about holidays, underwater adventures, tropical beaches, and good times. And that's a job well done in my book. What about you? Are you a sea loss convert already or even after watching this? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.